In this video, you will get a behind the scenes look at how I made this animation, uh, which I plan to be using in my VJ sets. And uh, it's not really a tutorial, it's kind of uh, just a brief look at how it was made, and hopefully it's something that can inspire you. So, since the start of the year, I've been diving deep into Stable Diffusion, the free and open source generative AI tool you can install and run locally on your computer or laptop if you have enough VRAM. And something that I've been wanting to do is to train my own model, or really a, a LoRa, which, long story short, is a set of weights you can add to your text prompt that will heavily influence or steer the output in a certain direction based on what the model or the LoRa was trained off of. So for example, let's type something super random into this text prompt like a photo of a man driving a high heel car. Um, and let's see what we get. Well, obviously, since the base model that I'm using in this example, SDXL 1.0, very likely didn't have pictures of cars that looked like high heel shoes uh, included within its training data set. This base model, which is just a six and a half gigabyte file, doesn't have the necessary weights or word image associations embedded within it to, to know how to uh, properly produce or generate an image of a car that looks like a high heel shoe. At least one that looks realistic, so that's why it, it, it did its best with what it thinks a high heel shoe car looks like. Do you even know what a, a high heel shoe car looks like? Let's Google this. High heel shoe car. Oh, whoa. There are actual high heel shoe cars out there. I wonder if I made my own model. Oh, somebody already did make one. Shout out to Denrake IW. Oh, you're in Cologne. That's not far. Um, so since there's already a Laura for this specific thing that was trained on what I assume were these images, all I have to do if I want to generate new images of high heel cars is to download this LoRa, put it in the LoRa models folder, apply it to my text prompt, and now using the same seed as the last image we generated, you can see that I now have a new image that actually looks like a man driving a high heel car. If this is your first time learning about what a LoRa is, well don't let this silly prompt example deter you from exploring what is a very fast growing rabbit hole because a Laura doesn't have to just be an object it can be a celebrity a character a style a concept your face your dog you name it and naturally if you are a creative person who recognizes the creative potential of a tool that is laying right in front of you then you might be inclined to explore training your own Loras on your own artworks and ideas. So I've had a small fixation on Rorschach inkblots because I think they're pretty cool and I want to put them into my visuals as an asset I can use in my VJ sets. Specifically, I want to accomplish two things. I want to be able to generate an unlimited number of original Rorschach inkblots. And two, I want to be able to animate these inkblots so they're not just some static image uh, and perhaps have them morph or move in some way. And fortunately, it's possible to do both of these things in Stable Diffusion with some extensions. Before making this video, I already did a small test of the first objective. Uh, so here are the 10 original Rorschach images that I downloaded and prepared as 10 by 1024 by 1024 JPEGs. And I want my model to produce just the plain black and white images of these ink blots on a solid white background uh, for my outputs, which will make it easier to use in the visuals later. I also added the text uh, TXT files with the simple caption like this, describing what is in the image so that way the AI uh, 
knows what is uh, a Rorschach inkblot. At least these captions can help it identify what it is in the image that is an inkblot. And we know for certain that an inkblot is not a solid white background, and it doesn't necessarily have to be monochromatic or grayscale for it to be an inkblot. So that's why I wrote those in the captions. To train my test model, I used a related free software called Koya SS, and I have to tell you, even after watching a lot of tutorials, I barely have any idea what most of these training settings mean. So basically I just hit the start button after setting the repeats to about 20 per image, a batch size of 4 and 8 epochs, and uh, after 400 total steps, which was about 25 minutes on my NVIDIA 4090 GPU, I got my first LoRa. Some of you who've used Stable Diffusion before might be thinking, can't Stable Diffusion, can't the base model already generate Rorschach ink blots? I mean, that's true, uh, but they don't really look the way that I want them to, so I'm sure you can see what I mean. I, I want my model to look even better and make some more unique ink blots, uh, so what I've gathered is done and prepared many more uh, Rorschach ink blots beyond the original 10 to expand my training data set to bring the total number of training images to 58 and hopefully by the end of this I will have a very robust Rorschach ink blot Laura. Four hours later. So after 2320 training steps I got my new Laura and I have to say I'm still very new to this process so there are probably some things I could have done better settings wise whether that means more or less training steps or a greater variety of images but for the purpose of this project, I'm pretty satisfied with the results. So when I talk about animating these, I initially wanted to use Deforum, but for some reason, Deforum does not like my Laura. I don't know why, but every time I try to render an animation, all the frames except the first one is, uh, they're too noisy, uh, or too empty, have too much negative space, or they otherwise are just are not putting out images that you would expect to get in the uh, text to image tab. But anyways, my workaround is to use a script in the image to image tab called loopback, which essentially is just letting you generate 32 frames at a time where each frame has influ is influencing the next one. And uh, it, does, it does the job. I set the denoising strength pretty close to one. You can see in this output folder that I've got a series of Rorschach ink blots that are developing over time. And to turn these frames into a video, I actually can use the interpolate pictures feature of the forum to generate in between frames and also stitch all these original and interpolated frames together in one video and I can set the frame rate, the speed. There's a lot of settings I can still play with in this regard but I think to show that it's kind of like beyond the scope of this video. I really have just wanted to prove the concept that one, training AI is possible and two, uh, you can animate it or use it in uh, a context other than just an image. Lastly, I want to leave you off with this quick workflow reveal where I can basically just drag this image into my Resolume composition, key out the white part, and uh, do whatever effects I want on this morphing uh, Rorschach ink blot. Basically now I can use it as an asset, put it on top of things, clone it, do whatever, and the possibilities as I'm sure you may be able to understand are kind of limitless, especially when you consider how I could record whatever I do in Resolume with these assets and then run it back through AI again, stylizing it with image to image or whatever process. And uh, this is really what I've, I'm trying to hit home here is that this AI stuff is unlocking so many different workflows that are just going to become irresistible to ignore, especially once you see 
artists actually using it in the years to come. I sure intend to be one of them, and I sure think that there's a lot of uh, creative potential, tasteful, really interesting stuff that can be done with this. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna get to uh, making art, and um, I sure hope that you feel inspired. And uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Peace.